Welcome back to Pro League, guys, here live at the Nexon Arena. My name is Valdez. Join with me is Moonglade. And just in that last match, we just had the playoff spots actually figured out here. We Dances did. This is going to grab second place with SK Telecom T1 in first. And then start to Yoey there in third and Jenner Groomings in fourth. But guys, for the last matchup of round one, we are going to have Prime versus MVP. Oh, buddy, what a <laughs> match this is going to be. This is all for pride. There is uh, nothing else on the line. But these teams want to rumble, and we're going to talk about it. Starting things off, we are going to have Goethe versus Marine King. So a bit of TVT fun. Some good fun. Yeah, man. I hope it's fun. I mean, unless Marine King goes for just another greedy Marine King building, just gets wrecked and Maybe. wiped with the floor. That could definitely happen, especially against happen. Yoda, who's been doing quite well out here. Uh, I'm not like amazingly well, but he's been doing well in terms of prime terms. I guess I, I could say. And a pretty small uh, MVP turnout tonight. Only six, no, five players, including the coach, six people, and we here we go. Yoda versus Marine King. Shake it out. Shake it out. They shake Indeed. it out. Indeed. Um, really looking forward to see Marine King actually just playing a straight up TBT. I don't want to see him get wrecked by like six or seven minutes here. We've seen it happen so many times. It's old to me, Moonglade. It is. It is old by now, Valdez. It is the, the last match of the season. We've seen it all before. Now, here we go. Looking at this match, so first of all, we're going to have a look at these players. That's La Sierra, a.k.a. Kang Ho. Let's hope he never uses that name again. Yeah, please. Um, he's been doing quite well. He is 4-1 here at uh, Pro League 2015. Yeah, he's actually doing fantastically. He's, uh, he's, he's always been one of my favorite Zerg players, and now he's back in action and back playing very well. I'm, uh, I'm so excited to see him play against Creator later today as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, here we have it, guys. Today's match, match number two. It's going to be Prime versus MVP. Like we mentioned before, Yoda versus Marine King on Overgrowth. Young Sheik versus Yongwa on Deadwing. Creator versus Losira on King Sage Home Station. And then Terror versus Salvation Catalina. Which one of these matchups are you most looking forward to here, Moonlit? Uh, I'm excited. I I guess Creator versus Losira. To see Creator's, uh, where his PVZ is at, because he's kind of been known as having bad PVZ. And Losira because he's playing fantastically, and he is Zerg. And then, I mean, Yoda versus Marine King probably may, maybe my second favorite because mm. I like a, a good TVT. I'm actually kind of looking forward to Myungsuk versus Yongwa. I mean, Myungsuk's shown some really nice PvP in the past, really mind gaming San actually 3-0 in SSL before, and Yongwa showing that he is also a mastermind, did quite well. He just barely did not make it to the round 16 of GSL. He looked so hurt at, after that one. Yeah, he did. Yeah, a bit of a disappointing performance there. Yeah. Well, guys, we do have the round one team rankings up here once again. Uh, we just went through them a bit earlier, so I'm not really going to go through each team once again. But down there towards the bottom, we do have Prime and MVP. Like we said before, it's kind of just for uh, pride here. Not I, really much on the line. Yeah, well, I guess whoever wins will like get ahead of the other. So that's that's one thing to note. So yeah, uh, I guess... Um, Prime could, if they win, they could might be able to get ahead of KT Rolster in that fifth position. I think it does matter slightly in terms of points. Just barely, maybe. Well, I guess you're always playing for points uh, for that end of the year sort of playoff, Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, I think being in fifth place will be better than being in sixth place and in turn better than seventh place, of course, but also in terms of points, more importantly. Interesting, we do get to see the penalty points that have been lost over there. KT Rolster already at negative one. Samsung Galaxy Con as well, negative one. Yeah. Surprisingly, no... Uh, no MVP penalties from Marine King. <laughs> Not yet. You wait until Not the later yet. rounds. Well, guys, we did go through this a little bit earlier on, but uh, for the round one playoffs, possibly, we do have an event here. You could come down and get a collector's edition uh, Warlords of Drainer for World of Warcraft expansion there. We do have a lot of Heroes of the Storm beta keys as well, about 100 of those being given out here, as well as five gift certificates. So you can use those around Korea if we're coming and visiting, maybe get one of those and uh, not have to spend as much money. That would be fantastic. The career is pretty cheap as it is. So oh, yeah, very cheap. You'll do fine if you come down here anyway. Don't worry. As we wait for the next part of this cast, Valdez, when these players are going to be getting ready, I want to hear their songs. I want to hear <laughs> what's going to happen. 
Is that what you're most looking forward to, Moonlave? You're gonna have to wait Damn because it. we're going into an interview first with Ayu and the two coaches. <laughs> if you win today, you guys will get the fifth spot and have three straight wins in a row. How do you feel about today's matches? It will be better. If we were being able to go to the playoffs, but we'll feel good to get three consecutive wins, and we'll try to do better in the second round and continue our winning streak. Our fans come to the studio and hang up. Some big banner saying never give up Prime. He's been here since last season. You changed your hairstyle. Choya says it's ruined. He doesn't like it. You have a losing record against Prime, actually. He says the record doesn't matter because it was before I came to this team. Wow. And he also lost to them in this round. Well, I, I guess he doesn't want to lose to them in this round, so he's prepared a lot for this match, is what he's trying to say. And he also wants to do a bit better in the second round. Well, I hope so. He's a very talkative person. But when I talk a lot in the interview, we seem to lose the match. So I'm trying to uh, save my words and not talk too much here. We're preparing very hard for the second round in particular. And he promised us that he will do better in the second round. Thanks to all the fans who have watched all the matches throughout the first round. And now the question is, who is going to win the last match? Round number one. Indeed, Valdez. What an, a riveting interview once again. And here we go. Let's get all set up. For this big match, Valdez. We may have had a, an accident happen here, but no one saw it, so it's going to remain a secret, Moonlade. And uh, you dropped. Uh, <laughs> no, Moonlade, so no one said. Microphone, dude. It's okay. dirty now. Secrets out. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really actually interested to get into this one because it's it is the last match. We are finishing up round one here. I want to see if they are actually preparing for round two, if they are practicing very hard, or if it's all just talk. I mean, Choya. He likes to talk a lot. It's no secret. He likes to talk and, to talk, uh, man. He talks pretty big, too. They got to walk the walk is what I, all I'm trying to say here. They're in seventh place behind Prime. Yeah, that's not a, not a good place to be, Yeah, especially if you're that confident. Uh, something's, of course. Something's going wrong. I mean, they do, ha you do have a pretty good lineup today. Uh, the potential is there. Mm -hmm. uh, even in this first match, Yoder uh, definitely looking favored against Marine King, who has not been doing well at all in TVT to say the very least. I'm not going to go into specifics just <laughs> yet, but yeah, when I look at this match, yeah. it's looking good. Game two, potential is there as well. Game three, potential is there. I mean, it's going to be a very close match, and it could go all the way. It could go to the ace match even, though. Yeah, I actually would not be surprised. It looks like just so far that these two teams are very evenly matched. And uh, going into our player introductions here, we do see Yoda. He is three and four, but all three of his wins are against Terrence. That is true, Valdez. Well spotted. Bomber, Journey, and Cure. His Bomber three wins. and Cure. Those are two pretty decent wins there. I mean, against uh, against Terrence. Journey's not bad either. He's not he's not horrible, but he's definitely not up there. And Marine King, on the other hand, two and six this season. Lost to life. Journey, Young, 
Maru twice, and then Dark. So he's had a lot of TBT losses, not to mention well, the uh, the TBT in Star League Challenger against Fantasy. <laughs> Never forget. Got 0-3'd pretty fast. He looked defeated after the first match, actually. So I, I guess that's what you're actually referring to there. He just just his, uh, his mannerisms going into that matchup. Yeah. But to be fair, this guy has played against some decent opponents. I mean, Maru twice as well as Dark. Sure. It's it's very hot opponents, but uh, he's definitely not on the level, Valdez. Yeah. He's definitely got to pick it up here a bit. Give us some of that Marine King of old. But regardless, guys, we are going to jump into game number one here between Yoda and Marine King. Hashtag passion right there. Oh my god. Down here in the bottom left, in the red, the prime Terran, it is Yoda. And up here in the top right, it is Marine King. Yeah, he's got a bit of that bush hairstyle going on. <laughs> he's going to have to get that cut a little bit before it starts to cover his eyes. Of course, vision <laughs> very important for StarCraft. I can uh, also attest to this. It is very important. <laughs> Make sure that your hair is combed back if it is too long. Yeah. I actually, it's it's so important for me, especially I, I wear contacts, if you guys didn't know, so I actually have a pair of glasses that I only wear at home, and I actually cannot play StarCraft unless I am uh, I take my contacts off. Really? Put on my glasses, yeah, because my eyes get a bit dry and I'm not looking the entire time. You're not ah. looking one second at your front against a Zerg. Zerg can run by immediately. This you is the did. Korean server we're talking about, man. Yeah, exactly. They don't hold back. Happen. They'll happen, man. And as we ease into this game, we are going to see Marine King go for something a little different, going for that gas first. Ooh. While Yoda goes for that standard sort of barracks opening. I like this. Marine King kind of mixing it up. We see a lot of the time Marine King loving to go barracks first or even CC first and just play that kind of greedy style. But this time looking to put on the pressure. Maybe becoming a changed man after his most recent losses. Uh, he probably thought to himself he has to because he has been losing a lot, especially in TVT. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's 0-4 in TVT here for the 2015 Pro League. So just those numbers alone, uh, along with all the individual results we saw as well, uh, they'll, they'll paint the story of Marine King's 2015 TVT so far. Yeah. It's not a good one. It's a story of sadness. <laughs> one that can be fixed. The year is of long. Of course. The year has only just begun. You can turn this around. And here we go. It's going to start off with the Marine. Early scout, though, from Yoda. He's going to know, okay, so you're going to be a little bit cheeky this game. Going for a gas first. High aggressive build. How will Yoda react to this? He'll react with a command center. He doesn't Ooh, care at all. Brave. CC on the low ground, no less. <laughs> he knows it wasn't going to be a reaper because of the, uh, I guess, how early the factory went down. Hmm. I guess that's one way to look at it. Yeah. Trying, to, trying to think if there's any other way to say that. I mean, the reaper could come after. It could but come after, but it'd be pretty late by then, I guess. So maybe hmm. that by that point, there should be enough marines out from Yoda. Hmm. We did see Yoda also go for that SCV scout just to make sure there's no two racks proxy sort of shenanigans as well. Uh, this Reaper is going to come in and follow up for a follow up scout. Actually, he's going to want to see that second gas if it's being taken. And exactly what buildings are coming down, what add-ons are being made as well, just to try to get a better picture of uh, what kind of composition Marine King's going to try to throw at him right here. Indeed, seeing that bunker go down to the natural. Gonna be holding on to that. And Marine King. Looks like he's gonna be going for a medivac and a mine drop from this because we do not see any tech lab just yet from the barracks. And there should be a medivac. There it goes. There it is. Okay, we're on point to see exactly how this is gonna be folding out. Mm -hmm. And we do see reactor marines being made. And a late starport for Yoda. Not making use of that factory just yet. I wonder what he wants to get out of that thing. 
going to really, be a mine. Really nice pullback by Marine King, actually. Although he is not going to be able to deny this Reaper scout, and the Reaper's going to see everything. Sees no second gas. Oh, yeah. Sees a lot of Marines, the mine there, and even the medevac. He knows every single thing. Oh, he even Marine picks King's up. Saying. He picks up and lets, lets the Reaper oh, I don't have know his about way this, with this man. mineral line. I mean, the, I guess the Hellion just came out. But still, that's a Hellion that's going to have to stay in home for just a little okay. while longer. So let's see how Yoda's defense is going to be here. He's going to have to defend quite well. Oh, that would not mind. If he gets a good shut off. Oh, my God. Magic can happen. But the oh, Hellion. No. Oh, Ooh, very nice. I, I think that was completely unintentional. The nice just the same. Yeah, man. And now the Widowmine is in a great position here. Four Marine King is going to block that ramp. But a nice micro trick there with the STB to take some of that damage from the Widowmine. He's even going to scan and clean that up. And now Yoda. Yeah, I mean, Yoda is kind of in a fine position from here. Yeah, I mean, he's got reactive Marines on his side of the map. Yeah. It's not going to be enough here for Marine King, even following up with the Viking to push that Medivac out. He does lose five SCVs, but his CC is very far ahead. Marine King's going to try to get even farther ahead. Uh, he's going to try to come back, I guess, by making a greedy third CC here. Yeah, this will definitely uh, put him ahead in the long run if he gets it done and not take any damage in the meantime. So, eh, not a bad follow-up from Marine King. Yeah. I wonder if we're going to see mech from this guy. I feel like we are. We're going to see that Hellion uh, Viking sort of play. Seeing that reactor go down on the starport. Do you see the medevac coming, trying to come back in for another drop, but it does get pushed out by one Viking. Now some Hellions trying to get into the main, possibly trade with the Hellions of Marine King, but I think they're going to be cleaned up quite nicely here. Not much getting done, but he does see that third CC. So he gets that important scout. Yeah, very important scout. Something he needs to know about earlier than later. And yeah, nothing else getting really done for Marine King. We are seeing a drop from you to go from the south side into the main of Marine King. This could do potentially a lot of damage. Has a Widow Mine, six Marines. Everything out of position for Marine King currently. Yeah, and uh, Yoda, I'm sure, once he saw that CC, he's like, how do I punish this? He wants to get his own third CC and also drop in the oh. main. The Widow Mine is going to get a great hit. Oh, actually, not the greatest hit. It only hit one there. Well, it, it hit it, like uh, four SCVs are left with on like one HP. Yeah. So uh, potential for a lot more killing. And this is doing a sick amount of damage. It's actually getting rid of a lot of hell uh, Hellions as well. And finally gets cleaned up, but still, decent amount of damage. Yeah, but it will be pushed out there. This Widowmine actually hasn't been dealt with. It's going to get a second shot here. Only gets one SCV, uh. but still, you know. It's something at least, but it will be cleaned up now. Will not be saved, unfortunately. Do you see Blue Flame now here for Marine King? Just yep. continuous double Hellion production out of that reactor factory. Well, we're seeing Mech versus Mech does, so we're going to have some fun on this Ooh. map. Not a bad map at all for Mech. Uh, you can sort of half your map off in the later game once you have that gold base. And very easy to kind of control the top of the ramp in every sort of part of your side of the map. And yeah, both players going for this Mech. I wonder... How this is going to end, Valdez. We rarely get to see mech first mech like this, if ever. Yeah, it doesn't really happen that often. We sometimes get, you know, just bio tank, bio tank, or sometimes bio versus mech just straight up. But this time, we're going to get that uh, bit of a treat. Maybe a bit of a longer one, depending on when these guys decide to push and how aggressive they want to be. Do you see the blue flame is finished here, or about to finish up for Marine King, whereas coming in a bit later for Yoda. Though he does start the plus one to his vehicle weapons a bit ahead of Marine King. Yeah. Well. Pretty ample amount of Hellions from both sides, so I don't think we're going to see much get done. The only thing that Marine King really has is the con contain outside the natural, which is going to help delaying this third base, get some mining in with a nice concave. He should be able to get some really nice shots off. And now we are seeing that tank production. Or Yoda. And Marine King so far hasn't invested into any tanks, instead going for a Thor early. Oh man, Yoda actually fighting this one with the tanks in the back, but the blue flame is finished. They do a nice job against the Hellions of Yoda. Oh, wow. Everything just explodes. <laughs> yeah, but Marine King does lose most of his Hellions because of the tanks in the back. 
And at the end of the day, Yoda with 12 lost Hellions to the 15 of Marine King. <laughs> We also think to see those two Hellions come back and scout out the third base. Going to do a couple of SCVs, but nothing critical at all. And Here's that drop. Blue Flame just finishing Ooh. up here for Yoda. This does get scouted, but does he react? Those Hellions actually going out of the base. These Hellions going to go straight for the SCVs here. Let's see how many kills they can pick up. So far, three. I think that five. Doing a bit of damage. Kind of running out of time. There's seven. Not bad. Bad while he secures his third base. Both players kind of neck and neck in, in uh, economy and supply. And upgrades, really. Yeah, I think it's just gonna. Uh, we're gonna see the real advantages come uh, forward in this game once these guys actually start to fight. We see some of that great TVT mech versus mech positioning. Well, actually, I guess the upgrade advantage will go to Marine King in the long run because he is going with. Uh, he's, he's using two armories to one of Yoda. So Yoda has only got plus one attack, whereas Marine King is 1 1 in just a moment. Mm. Yeah, good point. You do see the plus two does come a bit earlier for Yoda. But I believe those plus two, plus two are going to be started quite soon here for Marine King, unless he wants to go some kind of attack off of one, one, but it doesn't look like it. He starts yeah. plus two, plus two. One thing to note as well is this, this applies for air units. So the Viking, the air control, is going to really be in, in Marine King's favor when it gets to that point. And that could really play into it when it comes down to tank versus tank. In fact, that's probably one of the biggest things of all. You have to have that vision of the air or a lot of scans to really uh, push forward against tanks. Yeah. We do see the biggest difference actually in this game coming in the compositions from these two guys. We do see Marine King uh, dedicating a lot of his factories to actually Thor production. No tanks coming out of the sky just yet. Whereas two tanks coming out at a time for Yoda here. Yeah, I find this to be really uh, an interesting choice from Marine King. Uh, going for Thor's like this, they're good, sure, but when there's enough tanks, like, they're just going to die instantly. And I, I don't know what his plan is for them. We are seeing more Vedibacks be added to this composition as well, so I wonder if he plans to load them up at some point and maybe do something interesting along those lines. He could. I mean, yeah. he's also cutting Vikings here because he's going to have a lot of damage in the air with those Thors, and he's making a lot more Medivacs. A drop coming out here for Yoda. Yoda being just a little bit more aggressive with those. We did see some Hellion harassment from Marine King a little bit earlier on, trying to come to that third base, but nothing really came of it. And uh, there's that pickup you were talking about, those stores being loaded up. Okay, see? This makes sense. But, uh, I mean, is he going to drop in the middle of these tanks? I guess he might have to. So this should be pretty interesting. Yeah, this is a really cool build, actually. It's cool, but I wonder if it's going to work. I'm very curious. He's actually going to drop into the main base, but he's flying into Vikings. Ooh, and there's no way out for these Thors. Yeah, the Thor is actually just going to go straight up fighting against the Hellions and the Hellbats on the ground here. And he's going to lose that Viking war at the same time. He's kind of just losing everything in one foul swoop, Valdez. Uh, mm. Not the best of moves. Maybe a little too impulsive with his decision making. And now that massive tank advantage that we do see <laughs> it's from Yoda could come into play even stronger. I wish there were like a, a, a bigger word than massive right now to describe this tank advantage. It's like 18 to zero. Yeah. And Marine King continuing with the Thor production here. Still no tanks coming out. This is a very interesting style. It's interesting. To say the least. I feel like if these armies collided, like the tanks would just dominate uh, pretty one-sidedly. So I think Marine King is really relying on his drops uh, with the Thors. And uh, I don't know. This is, I've never seen someone mass Thors like this in a TVT. Yeah. Myself included. Marine King having a ton of Hellions on the ground, able to take out a supply depot in a matter of seconds. And he's just going to continue with these Thor drops. It's really interesting. Uh, he's going towards... Uh, uh, looked like he was going into the main base, but now he's going to actually just join up in the middle of the map entirely here. Yeah, I mean, that is a lot of uh, Hellbats, which is going to do pretty great in buffering against uh, these tanks. But still, I, I, I'm I, very curious to see when we actually see a big fight. And we might see that very soon as we see Yoda move across the map. 
He's identified where Marine King's army is. Yeah, Yoda's actually looking to possibly snipe out those medevacs before they can drop the Thors. And more Hellbats drops coming into the natural at the same time, losing a lot of SCVs. Is Marine King right now going up to 12, and he's not dealing with that. The Vikings now coming in trying to snipe those medevacs. But the Thors oh. do drop down and get some good hits on the Vikings. Here comes Marine King. That's a lot of Thor drops, and they get dropped right into the tank line. And you know what? This is going to do fantastic work. There's simply too much for Marine King. Everything gets wiped out. Wow. Okay, that worked a lot better than I expected, actually. Yeah, it did. But we do see Marine King lose a lot of SUVs, which is why these guys' supplies are still pretty even. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Marine King easily taking that fight. And now oh, look at all these SUVs bunching up. A lot of damage going down now. 33 SUV kills. Oh, wow. Uh, even more than that now, Bellas. 38. So, sure, Marine King won the fight, but the War of Attrition rages on, and that is a huge blow to the economy of Marine King. And I don't know if he even has that many uh, orbitals to really make up for it with a lot of mules. Only four so far. Fifth or oh, nearly there. Mm -hmm. I do see Marine King going for a bit of a counterattack here, possibly towards that fourth base. And why not? He's got that advantage right now. 23 Hellbats to four. I do see you know, that triple tank production coming in for Yoda, but the first fight with his tanks didn't really line up the way he expected it to. Let's see if he could do a bit better in this one. Yeah, well, the Thors are actually really lagging behind in this fight. And not the best positioning at all for Marine King. Let's see if it actually makes a difference. I think it might this time. There are simply too many tanks, and they are wailing on these Thors. All of them getting wiped out. Yeah, but this is kind of the way we expected it to go. Yeah, this is the way it <laughs> should have gone in the first place. And now the supply lead for Yoda gets insane. And now two Hellions are into the third base. The one of the only saturated bases left for Marine King. 17 SEVs going down. Yeah. The real difference in that fight was just that the Thors didn't get dropped on the tanks. They were just fighting straight up and taking damage from like 11 tanks in the back. So they got taken out pretty fast there in that fight. It was such a horrible position to fight from. Like you, you're just A-clicking down into a planetary and then units are attacking your Hellbats so your Hellbats turn to fight them. And your Thors are like trying to catch up but it's all too late and it's into siege tanks. And now he is down, nearly 70 supply. Uh, his composition is a lot weaker. Yeah, now four tanks coming out at a time for Yoda. So he's easily able to get back that composition pretty fast. We do have five Hellbats at the same time as well. And now he's starting on that armor upgrade. He does have the plus three, whereas Marine King, I think he's got plus three, plus three. Um, Marine King, he does have three, three. And yeah, three, oh. For, uh, for Yoda, but uh, not a bad thing because of, uh, I mean, they're all tanks. They're all kind of, they have such a range advantage on the army of Marine King, so he's doing a lot of damage before they even start taking damage. Yeah. Another Hellion run by coming to the fourth base. Marine King has not been so good at defending this and coming in at the third base at the same time, losing even more SCVs. This is Marine King. He does have his army way out there in the middle of the map. At that forward yeah. uh, tower. This, this um, tower. his economy is just getting completely oh, wrecked. That and natural. look at this. Oh, that natural. God, this oh natural. no. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so he's going to pick up. He saves some of them, but he's already lost 22 SCVs. He has no bases mining, Valdez. He's got no bases mining at this point. He's got 96 supply at the same time. Yeah, that's pure army at this point against the completely maxed out mech army from Yoda with a much better composition in terms of, uh, I mean, Viking advantage, tank advantage. He doesn't even have to siege. He can A-click. I want to see him A-click, and I want to see him drop mules. Damn it, he's sieging. <laughs> well, we're going to take it a bit slow just to eek uh, Marine King out of this game here. He's going to deny this fourth base, fifth base, rather, from mining. He's going to scan up, and Marine King's going to go for another drop here, possibly. But uh, Yoda, he's got... Such a huge count in Vikings. Do you see Marine King actually going around this army? It looks like he may just want to go for a drop. He's going for that Thor base trade. But, like, Yoda's entire army is already on top of his base. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what he's got planned for this. And I guess he can go into the production line and maybe create some chaos with six Thors. Sure, they're going to they're gonna level a base pretty quick unless it lifts off. But, uh, I mean, there's a lot of Vikings for Yoder, and they can kind of just come from behind. 
Where yeah. do we find these Vikings? Where Clean are they? Clean them up, and if he wants to lift off, he's going to get uh, pretty owned there by the Vikings. Yeah. You do see some of these factories going down, but at the same time, the main base of Marine King is getting leveled at the, uh, at the same time back there on the other side of the map. These yep. tanks do get taken care of. Yeah, the, I mean, the Thors are doing pretty good for themselves in this kind of situation, sure. He's going to be running out of medivac soon unless he cleans up these Vikings. And everything that's coming up the ramp is kind of getting wiped out by these Thors, which is great. But he's going to run out of them pretty soon. And I think there's two left at this point. <laughs> GG. GG. Wow, okay. Weird game, Veldez. I don't know how to feel about this one, but I think it's Marine King. That's just Marine King. That's, I guess that's the best way to actually name that game. That was Yoda versus our current TBT that we see out of Marine King. Yoda getting his fourth win here in TBT at the same time. <laughs> he just shakes his head like, I don't know, man. Yeah. And very um, yeah. very weird style, I have to say. That's not something we see that often. Props to being, like, uh, innovative, okay? Yeah. Props to that. Good job, Marine King, for, for showing us something a little bit different. Uh bit of a shame that it ended up the way it did and um, yeah I mean back um, to the drawing board seeing some of the engagements in that game there were times where Marine King did make it work but there were other times where he just like totally botched the engagements where he was just, like fighting straight up Thor's against like 11 tanks that were sieged up